Hello and welcome to another Thursday Night Grind. It is episode 17 and it is April 23rd, 2020. And you might notice that I'm not in the shop at the moment and it's also not exactly Thursday night. Uh, and that's because I'm doing mower blades. Uh, it is mower blade uh, May coming up on us here and I, uh, I kind of just wanted to catch you up on where I'm at with these at the moment. Uh, and two came across the bench. Uh, I'm just gonna do one of them. They're both the same, off the same machine, uh, but in the interest of time for you, I'll just do one start to finish and then I'll cut the video and do uh, the next one start to finish. All right, so here's, uh, here's the things like, just start, you know, very beginning, these come across the bench. What I'm looking at is the, the you know, what condition they're in at the moment. They're all almost always like chipped up and, um, I haven't gotten many that are bent and cracked. In fact, my own off of my own mower are some of the worst that I've gotten. So my customers uh, must be doing a better job than I am. Uh, and uh, if you go to my Facebook, I, uh, which is the American Edge, I, I plan on putting up uh, a picture or two of doing my own mower blades uh, just to illustrate uh, when it's time to replace them because uh, these are not you know, you, you can sharpen them several times depending on their quality, but they don't last forever. Uh, the other thing, they always, almost always need to get cleaned up. I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then uh, what I also wanted to tell you is like there's a lot of ways to do these, and I'm going to show you the way I'm doing it right now. I have been enamored by what Magnumatic is putting out. Um, I don't have any of their gear, but I make do uh, best I can. Um, also... As I was just talking, I forgot to mention, if like they're bent or chipped or cracked, uh, don't do the blade. It needs to go be, be uh, replaced. So you can just tell your customer that. Um, before I show you how I'm doing it, I do want to show you this piece of gear that I got recently. And I believe that this was for doing mower blades. Uh, the problem is that, so you see this bed right here, this wheel. Uh, for blades like this, they, they're not the same See how like it has a, it comes up here. I think this is the the high lift blade, uh, which is also my opportunity to tell you uh, there's still a lot more for me to learn about mower blades. But I have learned a lot over the past uh, few years. I've been doing these for a few years. Uh, but what's nice about this style is that you get this flat bed, so you do get to maintain that that bevel angle unless you have this high lift type blade, and then you can't do it. You have to either freehand. I just wouldn't do it. Uh, Magnumatic does sell a model of sharpener that can do the high lift blades. Um, and, you know, Magnumatic stuff is expensive, which is maybe why I'm enamored by it. Like, maybe it's worth it. Um, I think the first place I would start would be replacing this, uh, this balancing tool. This is the one I got from Sharpening Supplies. Right, you set it on a surface and put your blade on here. And if it's wiggly waggly, then you gotta shave off some more material so that it's relatively balanced. Magnumatic makes one that's far superior to this than this. Um, but it begs the question, something I haven't really hammered out. And if you are like the, uh, the mower blade hero, uh, I guess I've never had anybody, I don't know if I've ever heard of anyone saying uh, my mower's running poorly because my blades are unbalanced. Um, it, for like the single push mowers, like I get it, like the blade is affecting the, the, um, uh, the, the, the dampener, whatever the right word is. Anyway, like it, 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 it is really essential. But for like a riding lawn mower uh, where, you know, you have several blades, the engine itself actually will, ha will have a, a damper on it so I don't know like I guess I'm on the fence like do we need to have like the level of accuracy that that magnumatic tool offers uh, or like is this fine you know like if I had a lot of people coming back and be like yo that blade was, it was my machine was like lur, 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 lur. like then I then I, that would clue me in like there's there's something going on but uh, it's never happened Okay, so, but the, the first step of this is cleaning these blades up, and that's where the, the magnumatic tool, in addition to the balancer that I really like, is this machine that you just put the blade in and it has these counter rotating wire brushes and it just cleans it, flip the blade, so it cleans it, like, and you're done. Like, that, that's enticing to me. Um, but again, like, that's like a, it's like a $1,200 tool. 
It's got to take a lot of mower blades to justify that. All right, so a lot of rambling there. Um, let's let's dive in. I'll take you down here. I'm going to try to get you some good vid without shooting a bunch of sparks at you. Uh, but the first thing is to clean them up. And here's what I use for that. This is a uh, just a four inch angle grinder and I have this wire brush on it. Uh, I'm not, this, this is okay. It, I like how durable it is. Uh, the flat brush, I think I might like better, but um, when I was at the store, they didn't have the flat, they were sold out. So I got that one and I've been using it since and it's fine. And then, um, well, we'll get to that. All right, so let's bring you down here to the, to the, I put them all in a, I put them in a bench vise. You can see that. All right, I got my ear pro here. So I go into the vise uh, and leave at least half the blade sticking out here. All right, so this is where it's going to get loud. This would be a good time to turn the volume down on your uh, device, whatever you're, you're doing. All right, here we go. One thing that you can't get in the video is uh, one of actually one of my favorite parts of doing these, and that's the smell. That uh, that crusted grass coming off it smells good. Just looking to get all the grass and the rust off. Let me know if your view isn't very good. Doing what I can here. So not that this takes a tremendous amount of time, but yeah, with that magnetic tool, like these would both be done right now. Probably a little bit ago. It's time, right? All right, so normally I would uh, put the other blade in and uh, clean that now, but since I got you with me, let's get right into sharpening. All right, so the angle on these is, is a pretty traditional 35 degrees, which is my understanding. What I do uh, is I use this tool with a 40 grit uh, ceramic flak, flap disc. I've gone through a bunch of things here with um, uh, like grinding wheels and uh, new, um, sandpaper style. Uh, this is the one that I've, I like the most and the 40 grit seems like a nice balance between getting material off and leaving a nice surface finish. The, the grinding wheel actually seemed to me like it heats the blade up more. Uh, it didn't actually seem to be pulling off material faster and the surface finner finish was pretty terrible. So uh, that's how I have iterated myself to this. I'm not going to tell you that this is the best, but it's where I'm at at the moment. Uh, so what I do is I, I try to just, uh, t I take a pass, I kind of get the feel for what the angle is, and then um, I just try to hold that angle across the blade. So here we go. Going for a burr, not there yet. I want to get past those chips too. I got a good burr going on the the riser part here, uh, so that's all set. I do have a little chip right there. I'm not going to worry a whole lot about. Most of the cutting action is going on right at the tip of this blade. The way these work, so that's that's um, a definitely place to focus on. Uh, but it's also the indicator of when this blade is uh, ready to be replaced. All 
All right, so good burr going on here. That's actually all set. The other, th this gets kind of warm too, so watch your fingers, right? Um, the other thing I noticed with that other the tool that I showed you when we just first started was that uh, uh, it would it would heat up the blade so bad. So I found that that I feel like I'm just using that disc. All right, so now I, I have a burr built across the whole thing. I'll show you how I remove that burr. I'm actually going to move you over here, I think, and do something like this. All right, so the burr is on the underside here, so I'm going to take my file and push that burr up. Trying to keep the file flat on the back side. Then I reverse the file. I'm going to cut that, cut that burr off by one, a full stroke. All right, and that's the, um, sometimes that'll push a little burr back under, so I'm gonna just do that one more time. All right, cut that burr off. Another thing, like I can see some stuff you can't see, like I can see the bright spots of the burr. Let's do a little field test here. All right, and that's good, and we got past those chips. And as I'm checking it out, I might just check that one more time. Okay. I'm going to move you back here and we'll grind the other side. All right, watch out for the noise. being done. Burr, good burr, good burr, good burr. One little spot. No. Yeah, one little spot right there. Let's do another pass. Yep. Okay. Bring you back over here. Yo, are you getting value from this video? Uh, if you are, please smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Every week I sharpen something on the bench at the American Edge. Uh, and you've noticed probably a lot of diversity over the past 17 weeks. Um, but I would say that my bread and butter is still kitchen knives. So I'll try to continue to loop kitchen knives in. If you have any questions on sharpening any of this stuff, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. All right, so pushing that burr back. Pretty aggressive one under there. Got it. All right, I'm gonna shift my file around and lightly pull that burr off. Check back underneath. That's good. And then kind of check for sharpness too. All right, like the old, you know, if you should be catching your thumbnail. I, you know, you develop the feel for a sharp edge over time, but okay. And one little spot right there. All right. So I hope that I mentioned that, uh, this is, you know, I do this for hire. I do 10 bucks, uh, lawnmower blade at the moment. So if you think that that is, uh, worthy of $10, then maybe you should consider a sharpening business. Mine has been pretty instrumental in changing my life. Okay, so 
that. That's it. That's more blaze. I'm going to do the other one. Thank you so much. And uh, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you next week. And if you have any requests or anything at all, please reach out. Just add it in the comments. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Okay, given that I am um, I'm recording this ahead of time, I have the unique luxury now of actually uh, f filling in some gaps that I forgot about during the initial recording. One is, like, it's not totally done yet, right? So uh, I was starting to clean the other one, and I realized that I did not balance it. So I wanted to show you that this is the, the little balancer I was showing you. you. Just line it up with a, there. there's a bunch of series of rings on there, and you try to find the closest one. And if it's balanced like that, that's fine. Like if it were sitting like this, like if the ring were like that, you know, that would be an indication that there's a problem. And then what you want to do is not hog off material at the tip where it would have the most influence on correcting the problem. Uh, but also then you take the most life out of the blade. So you'd want to hog off material where it doesn't matter as much, uh, which means you'd have to take off slightly more material. The other thing to note too is as these blades wear, it's better to have an angle, like I'm going to do it dramatically for effect here. You'd write, it's better to have the edge going at an angle like this rather than grinding all, like grinding down here to get a square edge across the blade. Okay. Uh, and the last thing that I do, like I'm always trying to just make stuff kind of look, it already looks good, right? Compared to how it came, but I just like, uh, it's a, a pretty simple thing is just to squirt them with a little WD, wipe it in and the blade looks relatively shiny. And if you're doing this as a, um, as a fall maintenance item, which is a great idea. I love doing stuff in preparation, right? Cause like as we get into mowing season, like now getting the mower ready is just one more thing to do. Uh, but if you do it in the fall, then uh, your mower is pretty much all set to go. So anyway, I just wipe that. All right, how do you do mower blades and how does this compare to your method? Do you like it? Is this too amateur? This works fine for me. I do my own blades that way. So now that blade's ready. Oh, the other thing, which I'm also, I write out a little note like I always do and I tag it with these and put them back in the box. So, okay, what do you think? Hopefully that's it. Now let me know if I forgot anything else and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.